40. Why did they invent alarm clocks anyway? No, that won't do no good. It ain't the clock's fault. I might as well get up from here and go cook those white folks some breakfast. So it's you. Well, what's the matter, honey? What's wrong? Out all night laying around with other women. No, you know that isn't so, baby. I was out trying to win a little money. You know how it is. Yes, and I got to go to work and take care of you. Get out of my way. Sure can't dope these dames up. That's right, I'm going to bed. I can't be worried about that. Sugar pie feel this morning. Baby's sick. Feel well at all. Mm, I'm so sorry. I'll call the doctor. No, Lem, don't. I'll be all right. I only, only have a headache. I'll take an aspirin. I'll be fine this afternoon. You go into the yard and take your run out. Now, baby, if, if you were sick, you know, I'd lay off because you was worse than always, honey. But I don't want you to lay off, dear. You go and take your run out. I'll be all right. If I feel better this afternoon, I'll call up a friend and have him come drive me through the park. Mm, well, uh, that's uh, the hour to do you good, huh? But what friend? A girlfriend, of course, you silly. Jealous? <laughs> but I like you that way. I know you're in love with me when you're jealous. Yeah, but I... Kill any man that just looked at you. Oh, dear, don't talk that way. Why, you wouldn't want me as much as you do if... If, if what? If somebody else didn't want me to. I want you to love me a lot, but I don't want you to even think about killing anybody about me. You know, murder is a terrible thing, Lem. Well, let them think about that when they go looking at you. You are mine. I'm putting up for you. I've furnished this home, bought you a car, jewelry, and clothes, and everything your heart has desired. And you know that. And But it's all for you and me. And I don't want to catch no handsome dude of a loafer hanging around here while I'm out. If I should come back here and catch one of them dudes in here, I would sing it. Oh, Slim, darling, don't. No. no. <laughs> Say, what's worrying you? My man. Oh, then forget it. Yes, but he threatens to kill anybody who looks at me. He's terribly jealous. Yeah, and strong, too. Powerful. Yeah. Don't be afraid. He's gone. He won't be back for three days. Yeah, I know, but sometime to double back from the yard. Now, you ought to have him trained like I got my old lady. Yeah? Sure. She never questions me. Wonderful. Sure. Gives me all the money and never argue. I wish I had Lem that way. Yeah. Now, Thursday's hair payday. And you ought to get a load of that suit she's having to tailor make up for me. Boy, oh boy. I'll be seeing it. <laughs> and how? I'm taking you for a spin in the park this afternoon. Okay. How about a long one in the country? Okay by me. Jack. 
Jackson, driving that no count man or man around town in that pretty car Lem done given. Hush your mouth. Is the truth? Well, honey, man. Man, is that there working for the Hewitts, working her guts out, the hardest job in Birmingham to take care of him. Well, huh? If Lem Jackson ever catches up with her, I'll, uh, somebody ought to put her wise to what's going on. Ain't it so? By the way, suppose you tell her. And having her hating my guts? Never. I done put you wise, so you tell her. I has it. Yeah. I'll tell her. You told me. Well, we working women all stand together. And man is one of us. And I never was a slaving in the white folks' kitchen, taking my money, giving it to some old stinking yellow man to carry around and give it to some old stuck-up husband. Will you quit running your big mouth and bring me my breakfast? Of course, darling. I don't know you're hungry. You sure does look nice, darling. Yeah, well, do you like it, honey? Oh, lovely. <laughs> well, here I am, all dressed up, and no dough. Why, people seeing me like this would expect me to, uh... Oh, darling, of course, I wasn't going to let you go out broke. Oh, but honey, surely you're going to leave me car fast. You wasn't going to let me walk to work with these bad feet. You do love me a little bit, don't you, honey? Of course I do, Mandy. But you ought not be so quick to go around here listening to folks who gossip. I mean these people who are so quick to tend to other folks' business. Now, you do care for me a little bit, don't you, honey? No, of course I do, dear. But I don't know what you're talking about. Ain't nobody been talking to me. Well, listen. Then you get just what I mean. I mean in case somebody... For instance, somebody should come and tell you that... That? Cornell, that what? Well, it's like this, Mandy. I ain't no loafer like some of these niggas want to sound just because I ain't on some cold heaving job. I could be playing the piano down the Golden River Grill, but uh, me and the manager just can't jive. But as I started to tell you, I'm a businessman, and the white folks know it too. Of course, some of these niggas think I'm too deep for them because they can't understand me. But you understand me, don't you, honey? Of course I does, dear. Don't say I does. It sounds so dumb. Oh, I'm sorry. I won't again. I don't want you to be ashamed of me, darling. Well, then just listen to me and say words as I say them. I'm a businessman, and the white folks know this. Why, just the other day, one of them comes up to me and makes a deal with me to demonstrate automobiles, and all I sell, I get a commission on. Oh, honey, you don't mean it. Sure. Oh, that's wonderful. I always know. My duty is to drive a new car around and show it to somebody. And uh, ride them around in. Now, if somebody comes telling you that they see me driving a pretty woman, uh, or women, around, you'll understand, get me? Yes, but uh, you won't get to liking these women and forget Paul. No, I won't forget Paul. Why, well, I can't afford it. <laughs> that is, I mean, well, I'll always care for you, Mandy. There'll always be a warm spot in my heart for you. Why, well, you're so good until I, uh, oh, well, let's just forget about it. Now, you just believe in me first, last, and always. Understand, honey? Well, got to be going now. I got a big deal on tonight. Bye-bye, baby. tells me everything. Certainly. You see, uh, he's a big businessman. The white folks done hired him to sell and demonstrate cars. No, well, I declare. I was afraid I'm too deep for you, Liza. You see, Cornell is an automobile salesman. 
And his duty it is to sell and demonstrate cars. So that's the reason why you might see him riding pretty women around town. You don't say so. That's funny. What's funny, Liza? Your man and Lim Jackson gal. And he wasn't riding her around. She was riding him around. And it wasn't no white folks car that was riding around in neither. It was Lim Jackson's car. The car he gave her last spring. Oh, you poor darling. That man's just jiving you. Just like they always jive us. It's a lie. And I won't listen to you, Liza Freeman. You just jealous, that's all. My man's a big businessman while yours is a loafer. You just jealous and I won't listen to you. Mm. You're right about my man, Mandy. He's a loafer too, just like the most of them. But we women got to have a man. And as long as he's only no count, you can put up with that. But when they take your money and start riding and flying around here with a high yellow hoodie like that, Louis, then we ought to know about it. And that's what your man is doing, and he is doing it right now. <laughs> Signifying, but if you want to know the truth, put on your clothes and come with me. get us all in jail. No, sir. You don't need nothing but your natural strength and your big fist to wipe up the floor with that hussy. Listen, if I don't come by your place in the morning before I go to Miss Hewitt's, call her and tell her, or tell her anything. The Lord be with you, Mandy. I'm watching, and if anybody tries to two-time you, remember, I'm waiting and I'm round to go. Well, come on and let's go. <laughs>
No. I'm asking you like a lady. Please step outside. It won't take long. No, no, I won't go. Now look at here, Mandy. Let me tell you something. I just... Listen, just... <laughs> Now, give me my britches. <laughs> now, see here, this is a respectable place. You folks came. It's still a respectable place, Mr. Perkins. I just got a little business that I want to talk over with this couple. The young lady, especially. Lady is right. And I refuse to stand here and be insulted by a kitchen scullion. I understand what you want to say. Well, what do you expect a man like Cornell to do? Even if he does spend your little money, you didn't expect him to love you, did you? Why, you should be tickled to death to be permitted to even give it to him. And to think that he would care for a funny-looking old greasy cook like you. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> Now we're going to take Slow Kid's number. Okay. Slow Kid! Uh, watch this number. I want to see if we can use it. everybody. This is Mr. Gregory. He's the man behind the show. He's got his money in the show and he wants to tell you a few words concerning the plans of the show. Mr. Gregory. All right, folks, gather around. Hear what they'll have to say. I hope you like it, folks, but these are only rehearsals. I want you to remember that. If we go to falling in love with our own effort, often only to be let down so hard after the first night, until the heart is taken out of everybody by the bad press notices they get the morning after. And we don't want that to happen to our show. You know and I know that while a colored show may be and is supposed to stay within a certain prescribed scope, we must, if we hope to get anywhere, deliver something within that scope that the public will like and come to see. That is entirely different from what an audience has become accustomed to seeing and hearing. That, my people, is what I'm hopeful of giving them. So I want all of you to do your best. Unbend, relax. Give me all that's in you. But don't. Oh, please don't begin thinking how good you are and all that. Just hope you're fair. And try to get better with every rehearsal. And give me a show that will get over. And the public will like and come to see. All right, Sammy. What about the wardrobe, Mistress Boss? It's time we begin to fit these people we are going to keep. I agree with you, Sammy. And Miss Powell has promised to bring us someone she has elected. Where is Miss Powell, anyhow? Right here, Mr. Gregory. Good morning, gentlemen. I was down on the stage when you came in. I've been down there since the first one arrived. But isn't that the kind of girl we need? That a girl, Nina. Among other things, I wanted to see how our leads were reporting. On time, or the usual late check. They seem to be coming in on time, aren't they? Most of them, anyhow. Oh, but one. And she's been late every morning. 
hadn't arrived when you left. Who was that? Cora Smith. Really? Sammy should know. She ain't been on time since rehearsal started. And when Big Jones arrived with that big yellow car, she seems to always arrive in a bad mood. Swears and reads particular cane until she goes to her dressing room and sleeps at all. She wouldn't go to bed before sunup and up three or four hours if she was to be shot at sunrise. I'm sorry to hear that. She's really a good performer. While not the leading woman, there's a hub on which to show Mr. Penn. I hope you haven't quarreled with her. Say, boss, I ain't fussing with no woman, especially this one. I'm leaving that to you. But I'm telling you now, that Cora Smith is an honorary woman and a mischief maker in the bargain. And I don't care how good she is. And I'm sorry she means so much to the show. She's going to cause plenty of trouble doing rehearsal. And if you want my opinion, after the show opens, too. If it opens. You mustn't take it seriously, Sammy. Remember only that she's a good performer when she's sober. Oh, does she drink, too? Is what he says true? Drinks like a fish. He's late at every rehearsal and raises old Ned and holds it up when she does arrive. Gets everybody nervous and upset and sends them all home late at night when they could be leaving here around six or seven o'clock at the latest. Well, well, don't you see who's here? Give me the noise. Listen, that's her now. She's just arriving. Okay, boss. I'll see what I can do with her. Miss Smith, you're late. Why do you get here so late? Why, you little sawed off run. Don't you dare try to bore me out about being late. Don't you know that I'm Cora Smith? And I was late when I sang for the King and Queen of England. And anybody, you, Ted Gregory, or anybody else, can't tell me what to do when I get here. But Miss Smith, can't you see I'm only asking you to get here on time so we can... Shut up, you spook. I get here when I get good and ready. But, Miss Smith, can't you appreciate that there are others in the cast who would like to get home at 6 instead of at midnight? I... What do I care what time you buzzers get home? And you yellow husband. If you don't like the way I does, you know what you can do. And if I catch anybody laughing or kidding at me, I'll wipe up the floor with you and I don't mean maybe. <laughs> oh, little short, sort of runt like you, trying to tell me where to hit it. And I've a notion to... Sure, I get you late, because I get up late. And I had my habits on last night, and I get some on any time I get ready. And I don't propose to be jacked up about it by you, Ted Gregory, or anybody else. Do you get me? All of you. Well, I know my stuff anyhow. And if I feel like I don't want to come to rehearsal, well, I just don't come. And I dare any dig walk here to even just look like he don't like it. This show can't go on without me. So what? What do you mean by getting here late and starting stirring up all the work? What's it to you, a big loaf? I'll start all the fuss I want. Shut your big mouth and go on to your dressing room before I... Ah, oh, your big loaf. <laughs> Will you do it now, sir? Yes, dear. Well, get up from there. Get up. As your dress, dressing room over there, take yourself on in there and get ready to do what these people want. If I hear that big mouth of yours in the morning, I'll close it for you. What a man. My, my. I think I could like him. You could. What? Oh, I mean, uh, I think I'd like to cook for him. You know, make him some hot biscuits like I used to make for Miss Hewitt's back there in Birmingham. You remember. Well, you limit your life for him to hot biscuits, sister. Because he's my man. And I don't allow no man to look at him like you was looking at him just then. Or you be going back to Birmingham in a pine box. Do you get me? Yes, I, I get you. But remember, the first funny moving pass I find you making out of mouth. Yeah. 
Marty, if she runs into me, I'll send her further than he just sent her. My name's Mandy Jenkins, and I can whip any hussy that stands on two feet. Uh, I'm sorry Cole has been holding up your rehearsal. Uh, she, uh, I'm starting the first. See, I didn't know it. But any time she gets here early or late and starts a rooker, just send for me. See, I own the Autumn Leaf uh, Social Club. And I like to see my race get long, but you know, as some with a head full of that stale liquor, you understand, see, is always ready to start a rooker. Now, any time that she comes in and starts to perform, just send for me. And I'll straighten that chick out. Say. Why, Miss? That lady told me you called up last night. I could hardly wait to see you. Gee, you look good. Bye, bye. I'm so glad you think so. You know, I've been intending to get in touch with you ever since I heard you were here in New York. But honestly, I've been so busy. Well, you sure does look fine, child. New York certainly does agree with you. You know, everybody up on the Highlands sure does miss you riding that baby buggy up and down the avenue. Come on, we'll go in the office and talk it over. <laughs> How'd you leave everybody, Mandy? I left quite a while before you did. Oh, just fine, honey. You see, I know you was up here and what you was doing because I met your mammy at a children's supper down in Alice Sea. And she told me all about you. Really? Yes, yeah, she told me how you'd gone through school and graduated from college and now you know everything. Oh, no, Mandy. Not everything. Just a few things. Well, most everything. She says how you was a stenographer and worked in an office and... Now, what did you do, honey? Run one of them typewriters? Ticket, ticket, ticket? Like a white girl? Oh, huh? but there are plenty of colored girls operating typewriters now, Mandy. Sure not. Oh, yes. Does you work for white folks, honey, or colored? A colored man, the producer of this show. That's great, and I'm sure glad to see our folks getting on. He ain't stuck up, is he, honey? Oh, by no means. He's a fine young man. And young, too. Mm -hmm. That's right. I definitely remember your mammy telling me something about him. Well, I'll take you over and introduce you to him. Come with me. Sure, sure. Oh, I forgot to tell you. You know, your mammy's been moved out of Alley C since you left. Oh, yes, she wrote me. A better house in Alley G. That's fine. Pardon me, Mr. Gregory. This is the woman I've recommended for our wardrobe mistress. Her name is Amanda. Amanda Jenkins, Mr. Gregory. Glad to know you, Mrs. Where is it, Miss Jenkins? Uh, neither, Mr. Gregory, just plain Mandy. All right, uh, Mandy. She's the one I've recommended for our wardrobe, Mr. Then you can sew? Yes, yeah, sir, but, uh, I cook best. But I understood you're an expert seamstress. We must have a woman who can sew and trim and fix clothes, not cook for the show. Oh, Mr. Gregory! Excuse me, please. Why don't you stop talking about cooking? He wants a seamstress. That's what a wardrobe mistress must be. Sure not? Of course. Uh, you can sew, can't you? Sure, sure. Uh, that is a little. Why don't you tell him so? You're from my home, and I want to help you get this job. Oh, honey, I'm so grateful. And I'll do what you tell me to. But I is a good cook. I can make some biscuits that just naturally melt in your mouth. And you have to be a good cook to stay out there at Miss Hewitt's. And yes, sir, and I... Here comes Mr. Gregory back. Now, remember, don't say anything more about cooking. But tell him you can sew. Sure, sure. Now, as I was saying, we must have a woman who has specialized in dressmaking, fitting, and designing to prepare the costumes for our show. Now, you don't seem to answer our... Oh, but Mandy can do all that, Mr. Gregory. Why, she used to sew for the best white people in Birmingham. And since she's been in New York, why, she's worked on Fifth Avenue and Madame Chico's. Head designer over there. Oh, she can trim and design. She does it quickly, too. I know she can. So consider her for the job. And I'll explain what we'll want done while you go on with the rehearsal. All right, Miss Powell, since you speak as you do about her, I know she must be all right. Thanks, Mr. Gregory. Now you go on with your rehearsal. You're terribly late already. Pardon me. We're gonna try one of Miss Smith's numbers. Okay. Oh, Miss? Yes, Mr. Pell, I'm right here. Right this way. Will you 
take from the uh, chorus of Once I Did. Tell him what key you wanted. Eighth flat. Once I did, but now I love no more. I'll tell you just why. One I did. You always made me cry. You take on all the sunshine and left me vain. Each night I pray the sun would shine for me again. Once I did, but now I don't believe a word you say. From now on, I mean, go your way. It's all over, now you're free. And anything you do, honey, it sure won't worry me. Once I did, but now I love no more. Lordy, honey, your mammy didn't tell me everything about you. What, what do you mean? She didn't tell me you could lie like that. <laughs> Yes, us colored folks are just natural born liars. And you, you just swept me off my feet. But why'd you do it, honey? Why did you lie like that? For you, Mandy. I love you, dear. Why, how could I ever forget all you did for me back there in Birmingham? The help you gave me while I was struggling to get through school, and the food you brought my mother, and the money you gave me, and all that. Have you forgotten, Mandy? Of course you have. That's just like you, you old dear. You were always so good to everybody. You never thought about yourself. But I'm taking charge of you from now on. You're going to start being my big sister from today. I don't know whether you can sew or not. And I don't care. I only know that you're good, honest, and faithful. I can sew. I'll teach you how to if you don't know. We'll weather at night, and nobody will ever know who made the costume. You and I are going to stick together, Mandy, here in this big city. Let's try chorus number. All right, girls. <laughs> Get a Draymond and move your things right out of that stuffy little old room. No, no, I won't listen to any no's. I've a nice four-room apartment, and the girl who's been rooming we work nights together. The Lord's gonna bless you, child. I don't know why you're so good to poor old crazy Mandy, but... Oh, you're not poor and old, and you're not crazy. You're just good. But some people misunderstand you, that's all. Mr. Gregory's coming. Hurry now before I have to lie some more. And I don't want to lie anymore to him. Sit down, 
Well, fellas, I'll call the boss. Mr. Gray? Yes? I just picked these boys up in Harlem. Better come down and see what they got. Well, let's see what you can do. All right, take it down, Harry. What else can you do? Well, these things are never called country boy at heart. Well, let's hear it. I'm sorry, but we haven't got the music here today. If we could have it for you tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow then. All right, thanks. Come on, Taylor. Okay, Mr. Gregory. When I dressed him up and give him my money, I was so mad when Liza told me what he was doing that I just naturally lost my head and got in a car and went out to that roadhouse and just wiped up the floor with that hussy. Shame on you. Huh? Shame on you for fighting. For fighting at all. You shouldn't be so common. Says which? Don't you know it's not dignified or becoming for a lady to go around fighting? Oh, of course it ain't, honey. I never did before. But when I see them with their heads together, a browsing and a cooing, and their eyes closed like they were so much in love with each other, I just went crazy and crazy. Him all dressed up in the suits I bought him with my money in his pocket. And she turns around and calls me a funny-looking, greasy cook. Mmm, child, you'd have fought, too, if you felt like I did. <laughs> of course, I was mostly over it by now. But you know, it's funny. Sometimes I find myself thinking about him now and wondering what he's doing and who's taking care of him and giving him their money. Terrible. Says which? Why, giving a man your money. What manner of a man is it that would accept money from a woman? <laughs> all manners of men in Birmingham, honey. Oh, no, Mandy, not all. You've just been going with the wrong kind. I guess she's right. But them's the only kind would ever pays any attention to poor me. Now, you mustn't see things that way at all, Mandy. No real man would ever think of such a thing. If he really cared for you, he'd rather give you some of his money. Sure enough? Of course. And that's the kind you're going with from now on. Sure enough. You know, I'd like to have a good man, honey. Well, you just be patient. You'll meet him someday. Who knows? He may be waiting for you now, just around the corner. Sure enough. What corner, honey? <laughs> Mr. Gregory. I invited him to dinner to eat some hot biscuits. Lordy, and I ain't even put the things in the oven yet.
Nice place you have. Thank you. Won't you have a seat? Now make yourself right at home while I go help Mandy with the dinner. Would you like to listen to the radio? I'd rather listen to you, Lena. Why, Mr. Gregory, what do you mean? Why can't you call me Ted? I'm a young man. And don't you understand, Lena? Haven't you been able to see that, that I love you, dear? Oh, Ted, I'd hoped so, but didn't dare think you did. And do you love me a little too, Lena? All right, Miss Watson. So this is a little girl from Birmingham. There's a little girl just came in from Los Angeles. They tell me she's very good. Let's see what she can do. Bring her on. All right, Miss Harris. I want to talk to you. What's on your mind, brother? I want to get on relief. Yeah? How long you been here? That's where our conversation has got to be confidential. I was listening. Just give me one more little drink. Then I gotta go. I'm late for rehearsal now. And if that man of mine finds it out, he'll break my jaw. That's just what he'll do. I just got in town last week. I know you're supposed to have been here two years, but they told me to see you. Well, they sent you the right man, all right, because I knows the ropes. That's what they told me, and, and everything is confidential, and I knows how to keep my mouth shut. You better if I get you on a relief and you just got here in two weeks. Hmm. 
I's got you. Now, what am I supposed to do first? The first thing, you got to fill out some papers. Yes. Then they're going to send somebody around to check up on you. But be sure when they get there that you be looking good and bad, hungry, ragged, down in the mouth. Eyes wise. I'll help you downstairs to the taxi if you don't mind. Get away, man. I ain't drunk. How'd you get that way? Pardon me, ma'am. Go shave for a week. I'm wise. Wait, then, gonna do. They're gonna offer you a job, but don't take it. How come? It's easy on the release. And sure. Sure enough. I worked all night on this number, and I believe it's just what we want. I'll have Broadway run it down for you, and we can hear how it sounds. But it seems if they offer me a good job, I ought to take it. I don't mind working. Man, you crazy. They'll give you $16 every two weeks and grow for sitting around. What do you want to work for? That changes the complexion. Warm. What next? Well, you must see me every day until the check starts arriving. Then I'll be seeing you. Of course, Smith ain't showed up yet, and we're ready to start. That woman sure is a pain in the neck. I have to have Nurse Quark and we get on the phone and call us. We're just holding her up. Never mind, Sam. Here comes Miss Powell. I have her to call. You go backstage and see that numbers appear in routine, and there's no time is lost between exits and entrances. Hello, Miss Powell. Hello. I've just been informed that Miss Smith has not arrived yet. Of all times anybody should be late, this is most exasperating. I know. Well, I'll get on the phone and see what I can find out. Meanwhile, she's not due on for 40 minutes, so go ahead with the opening. She ought to be here by the time you get to her. I hope so, anyhow. I wanted you here to check up on things, sir. I understand, dear, uh, Mr. Gregory. But there'll be another rehearsal tomorrow. We've got everybody dressed and ready back there. So go ahead with the opening before they begin to get restless. We're ready. What do you say? Let her go. <laughs> Now I'm going to run down a few bars of this course with the girl. And if I hear any noise while this is going on, out you go. And I don't mean maybe. All right, Broadway, let her go. Jump at Jehovah's. No word from her yet? I've just talked to Mr. Jones. He... Goodness, let's hope he's found her. Hello. Harlem Hospital? Yes, this is the Winchell Rehearsal Hall. I'm answering for Mr. Gregory. What? Yes, we'll come right over. Cora's been in an accident and they've taken her to Harlem Hospital. Goodness, but I hope it isn't serious. Sammy, call up the rest of the rehearsal for tonight. Cora's been in an accident and she's in the hospital. Well, Mandy, did you hear the good news? Laws of mercy. Well, you take care of everything while we hurry to Cora. Sure, sure. Well, it looks like we're blown up. There's a hole in the battleship and we're sinking. This show can't get to first base without a blues singer and a mammy lead. They look for it in this type of show. 
And Cora Smith is the best one in the whole Negro race. You're right. Oh, isn't it terrible? Just as we were about to get started, too. I'll hear it now from all sides. They said I couldn't do it. Of all the color shows that have gone by the board, no Negroes ever produced one. From Williams and Walker to Green Pastures, they've all been sponsored by white men. No Negroes ever been on the money, nor the profits. But we're not whipped yet, dear. We're only checked. I don't know. I feel as though we're going to make it yet. Now that Cora's out of it, I feel sort of relieved. Strangely relieved. But Lena. Oh, Ted! Ted! This is our blue singer and Mammy Lee. I knew we couldn't fail. I just knew it. Whatever in the world are you talking about, Lena? Have you lost your mind? Lost nothing. I've just found it. Oh, Mandy, Mandy, your time has come. You're going to save us. You're going to save our show. I can't save myself now, honey. I was moving. Why? Well, you see, when I left rehearsal tonight, I met the man that treated me so bad in Birmingham. And he done hoboed his way all the way up here to New York, following me. And I can't help what nobody says, honey. I just love that man. And it almost wrung my heart to see him so raggedy and hungry, so... So what? Well, I know how you'd feel. Him all raggedy and no good for nothing but playing the piano, so Oh, I... can he play the piano? I mean, does he play good and swing and jazz? No, he can play anything, honey. That's why they talk about him so. You know what they say about a man that plays the piano? He ain't good for nothing else. But I just naturally love that man. And I don't care what nobody says. I'm going to take him back. So that's why I'm moving tomorrow. I have a big idea. Since Cora Smith got drunk and stares and fractured her leg and will have to stay in the hospital for perhaps months, we've got to have somebody to take her place. And that somebody is Mandy. But Lena. Never you mind, but just listen to me. I know Mandy can put it over because she's got just what this show needs. Swing. Now here's the idea. We'll have Taylor write a new theme song for the show, postpone the opening 10 days while we get to shape to take Cora's place. But honey, I can. Lena. Oh, yes, you can do it. Now you two just be calm and listen to me. You say this man of yours plays the piano, and you then go out and get him and bring him here at once. He's going to play for you. And Ted and I are going to put you through the most strenuous 10 days of rehearsing on record. But you're going to save the show, Mandy. Save it for Ted and me. Now go out and get him, Mandy, and hurry. I'm going to get him, honey. He's waiting just around the corner. Oh, Lena, do you really think she can take Cora's place? Because we can't. Well, just trust to my judgment this time, dear. Wait and see.
You don't need to go trekking off to Atlantic City to open. I'll put a show on in my theater as it is. But Mr. Brett. Now, I know just what you're going to say, but let me do the talking this time. Now, you've worked hard. All producers do that. Now, you've got a fair show. But with one exception in your show that you're all afraid of, with the possible exception of Miss Powell here, it's just another colored show. It'll last about as long on Broadway as the average one that's been brought down from Harlem has been lasting. But you've got in this show one spot that is a constellation. And that one spot is the new woman you just rushed in at the last minute, Mandy Jenkins. She is the most original and versatile person I've ever seen. With her on a long-term contract, you've got the biggest colored possibility since Williams and Walker. And it's because of her and the spot she is in this show that I am ready and willing to open on Broadway without even an out-of-town trial. And to show you how much I think of it, I am ready and willing to assume all financial obligations of the show from now on and lay in your hands a check for $10,000 advance on your share. And the check can be certified. I use the 50 square feet over the top of my theater for the biggest electric sign on Broadway. My only stipulation is that the name of the show be changed to Mandy Jenkins in I Love That Man. Nobody else but.
got to hurry. Show. We're very grateful. God bless her. <laughs> 